Welcome everybody back to our next uh, webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers and a warm welcome in the name of JFT Brokers as well, but also uh, from my end and speaking right now is Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski. Yeah, as you know me now, I think, and um, we get more and more used to each other. It's uh, really good to have you here once again, back to that kind of webinar. And for the records, I have to mention the date. Yeah, we have the 30th of May and uh, 7 p.m. 2017. Wow, uh, that year went on extremely fast, at least uh, for my feeling. But uh, anyhow, so that's not the topic uh, of today. Today, the topic is um, all about power candles. That's a special thing we want to investigate. So as always, it's not only just um, presenting another trading strategy. Uh, um, you know me now a little bit more that uh, if I talk about trading setups, trading opportunities, um, I always like to emphasize how I come to those kind of conclusions. So what's behind uh, what I'm talking about? And is there anything I can present and show you which really um, yeah, draws exactly those kind of conclusions? And uh, that is something we want to do, as always. Um, you might already uh, have realized that um, in the go to webinar control panel you find already the slides of today and later you will see i will present something special um, and then latest you need my email address because i cannot share uh, this mt4 indicator i want to present here today i cannot share it directly out of the go to webinar control panel simply because of the um, data formats uh, of um, that uh, technical tool. So anyhow, just send me an email, but uh, that is something for later. Good. Um, I have always to show shortly this uh, slide because you know we talk about trading strategies. Uh, so keep in mind that whenever you trade, you do it on your own. Um, and uh, But I know that you know that quite well and you understand even why I have to show every time this slide. Uh, talking about slide, uh, just one additional remark here. You always find the recordings of uh, those webinars and uh, also from my other colleagues uh, on the YouTube channel of JFD. So just link that uh, YouTube channel to you. Maybe you follow directly, then you get a uh, notification whenever there is something new. Anyhow, there are brilliant webinars of those uh, colleagues as well. And even in English, you find um, something there as well. Good. So, but back to the topic. So, <clears throat> today I want to um, dig a little bit more into the overall topic of developing trading strategies um, because it's a good point in time to show you a little bit more of how I think and how I derive all those strategies I personally follow. So meaning not following in the sense of uh, follow other traders. No, so those trading setups are real trading setups in, uh, for my own. And so that you understand a little bit more how I develop trading strategies at all. Um, during the next couple of weeks, months, and so on, I will always uh, dig a little bit deeper into that topic. So it's a brief introduction today, but you will see uh, that will have a follow-up uh, even on that more general point of view. Especially next webinar, for example, will be a little bit more about statistics um, and um, uh, it always sounds boring, I know, but uh, it's quite helpful to get those trading uh, trading strategies. I want to share with you directly then uh, one example, and uh, that example of today is power candles, candles which are more big, more pronounced than any other candles, and if those power candles uh, occur that has a special meaning. 
and that not only a special meaning by the, by its own no it has um what we call a probability advantage an edge for our trading activities and of course that's what we want finally to have is not only something special what happens sometimes in the market it's uh, quite more important to to have an idea of um, how can i trade it and why it's good to trade exactly what i will present and uh, that can be derived just once again with a short excel sheet and uh, you will learn how to do that finally i want to present an indicator and so-called mt4 indicator for power candles that means um, i can show you how to use that indicator and it will automatically highlight uh, special candles within the chart uh, whenever a power candle occurs and so that gives you let's call it a signal within the chart hey now it's time to have a closer look and uh, thanks to peter milner who has coded that indicator uh, i can share that indicator uh, with you as well um, finally then you as announced you will need my email address and then i can send you the indicator directly uh, via email good so i want to start a little bit more about how to create trading strategies at all and um, maybe it's um, new or astonishing for you itself that my starting point is as yours just the observation in the chart so of course i look to charts and of course i go through different underlyings different time frames and so on and from time to time i do or i make some observations <laughs> why do i call that that abstract because i mean it exactly that way that means just an example um, let's look for the ducks uh, index maybe you have the observation hey between nine and ten if if the ducks within that time frame goes upwards that is a good indicator for the rest of the day that's now an hypothesis nothing else so that's not proven but you look to the chart and see okay today it was exactly that way i have no idea whether it's really today uh, or whether that observation would fit or not it's just an example and you look for the day before yes uh confirmed even the day before before no it doesn't work last week and you find some examples sometimes it works sometimes not but you think in the majority it seems to work having the the observation the first hour of the ducks gives you a good indication for the rest of the day so finally out of that observation we have a hypothesis and now what we need is we need a statistical proof of that idea of that of that basic observation and if we found if we can prove and if we can confirm that we have a probability advantage with our idea with our observation or more trading like this is called an edge um, a wording which is sometimes more related to uh, poker but anyhow it's uh, valid here as well so if we f can confirm that edge then this is the start of a new trading strategy a new trading setup what to do we need this statistical proof and not all only just looking to the chart uh, a few days backwards or maybe uh, one or two weeks backwards no we need much more data and uh, in order to confirm or not confirm our idea but we need real statistics what i don't want to see is just the confirmation like okay three times it works two times not that's an edge fine enough i will trade it from tomorrow onwards so that's um 
quite too short uh, handed. No, we need a real proof and we can derive those proofs sometimes just with Excel and I will show you a little bit more about that. Finally, we have to do one additional step and that step is that we, we then finally need exact trading rules because just knowing, I come back to my, my um, example, just knowing, uh, okay, we, we, we consider the first hour of the ducks between uh, 9 and 10 and that gives a good hint for the rest of the day. That's still not a trade. A trade is much more. A trade needs an entry criteria and what's most important uh, personally for me is we need a stop loss, for example. But let's go through the list. So we need a clear defined entry criteria for our trade. And of course, as next is, we need a clear exit criteria. So back to the ducks example, uh, should we close a trade at half past five or at uh, 10 o'clock or should we apply a, a take profit or a time stop or a trailing stop or whatever. So we need definitely a clear defined exit criteria for our trade. So when to close a trade. What we need additionally is always a methodology to calculate our position size. In whatever mm, way you are doing that, maybe you use 1% of your account um, as a rule of thumb or whatever, but we need a rule for that. Because only if we have a stop loss and a clear defined position size, then we are really, then we really know what we are doing. Finally, as mentioned, we need a stop loss for all our trades. Otherwise, we have an uncalculated risk and that's nothing I would do with my private money. A take profit is not automatically needed. So we can live with a stop loss only and we don't need um, a take profit. Why? Because we have that exit criteria. As long as we have a clear defined exit criteria, then we uh, don't need to take profit. It might belong to our specific strategy to have a take profit, but it's not necessary, uh, at least if we have an exit criteria. Think about um, trading strategies like crossing an EMA. So for example, that strategy, you have an open position and you don't have to take profit, but you will close that position whenever the price crosses the EMA or vice versa. So that means we have an exit criteria, but not a take profit. So just more from a logical point of view, uh, the more uh, needed one is the exit criteria. So, but all <laughs> what we have to do here is that first is a statistical proof. And for that statistical proof, what we need is price data. We need historical price data for our observations. And normally, um, or at least from my experience, uh, the price of the history you can have within MT4, uh, for me personally, is too short. Um, I'm in most cases looking for more than 10 years, even on smaller time frames. Um, so what I need is um, historical price data. Yeah, it's the best as, as always uh, for free um, that, that I don't have to pay for those kind of data. And therefore, and I know that a lot of people have um, similar ideas like I have, but uh, finally what they need is um, price data. Therefore, I mention here four sources for uh, historical data. All four sources are free. Uh, only the latter one here you have at least uh, wants to register, but uh, don't worry, you don't get um, uh, advertisements or any other um, uh, news via email. So it's only a re registration, but uh, you don't have to pay for that. So let's go through the list. Um, so the first one is Yahoo Finance because there you can have a lot of um, D1, so daily 
based uh, data and um, you will find mainly indices and uh, if uh, that is of interest for you as well you will find ETFs there as well but D1 and not intraday data. Um, the maybe most comprehensive source uh, is uh, what is called stock.com and uh, be sure that it's not a spelling error here uh, it's really written that way um, it might have to do because that uh, website is based in poland and um, maybe they write stocks uh, uh, that funny uh, anyhow you find there are really, really hundreds and thousands of underlyings so nearly everything you can download there uh, with extremely long histories. So if you think, for example, about Dow Jones, uh, you can have the Dow Jones from the very beginning, 1800 something. So, uh, and even the gold price uh, goes back to 17, I don't, I forgot, but uh, so we have really long histories for those data. Uh, next source, and now we go intraday as well, um, is the source which is called histdata.com. Here you will find uh, M1 data, so on a minute base, um, mainly for Forex, a few indices and a few commodities. Uh, be aware that uh, those data are um, New York time. So you, if you look for the DAX, for example, uh, it opens at really strange um, timing. Um, but uh, you will see that. So anyhow, you have uh, access to... Uh, M1 data for about eight years now. And the last source I want to mention here is Stukas Copy. Uh, here you can even go down to tick data uh, and everything upwards, of course, uh, simply by a selection of the time frame, um, then your private time zone, and so on. And yet, then you will find currencies, indices, commodities, stocks, so uh, everything you need. And then you can do um, analysis like I will do in the next couple of minutes with the power candles. So because I will do my example on H1 and even H1 means um, for 10 years history that is about 70,000 um, rows of data. So that's uh, already quite huge but that gives us a good statistic for what we are doing and for our analysis um, and finally to prove or not prove any hypothesis of a trading setup. So those sources and if you have problems with them uh, just uh, send me an email I can help you uh, if you don't know how to convert or how to import uh, those data in Excel for example it's quite easy but um, if there's a problem just uh, send me a note. So that about data sources, and that is something we need for our trading strategies as well. Um, but now back to the overall topic, power candles. So the basic idea is that sometimes there are huge candles. But now back, what does it mean if I talk about a huge candle? Because if I talk about a huge candle, I always mean the body of a candle. And just to, to um, remind you what's different, uh, let's uh, quickly go to, uh, to a chart and uh, uh, zoom a little bit in. So here, for example, we have uh, where now my cursor is in the left um, upper corner, um, a little bit bigger green candle, so a bull candle. Um, and the body of a candle is always the difference between close, which would be here, and open, which is here. Uh, let me look whether I can find another example uh, just uh, to see only uh, a huge candle, but with Let's look for this one, where now my cursor is. Even that candle is not uh, that small, but only between high and low. The body of that candle is not that huge. So if I talk about power candles, I always talk about the body of a candle. Um, go a little bit further down the line, uh, the road, then 
um, you you might know those dojis which more or less don't have a body and they only have uh, the two lines upwards and downwards so that is a signal of uncertainty and exactly the opposite of what we are looking for right now here so one thing we could do and um, i will and within the next couple of webinars i will do something similar uh, for example we can look for the distribution of the candle size of course you 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 might think the bigger the candle uh, the less often okay uh, you're right um, the bigger the candle then it's more seldom less often that you will find those kind of candles and if you do the real analysis of that then you will find that that distribution more or less follows a so-called gaussian distribution so size versus um, occurrence probability um, is a gaussian distribution but now comes the but there's a big but within that distribution. And what you will find is that big candles still occur too often. So normally, so those tails, and you really talk about uh, the tails of a distribution, those tails are a little bit too much pronounced. So you will find big candles a little bit too often or in a more common sense those are black swan events so and they occur too often so and that is that they are not according to the typical gaussian distribution which uh, would be a proof for the total randomness of our prices that deviation of that randomness is our chance that's our chance being a trader you know that most of the times the prices are just wiggling around and it's always you're always on the wrong side you enter a long trade price goes down and so on and so on you know those kind of stories i assume quite well quite well but we have from time to time deviations of that randomness and those deviations are exactly those power candles and therefore because they are too often compared to a random behavior that nearly automatically gives us a chance as a trader and you will see that we can even derive more out of that because we will see how to trade such a power candle but still a little bit back to why those candles occur um, in most cases they are driven by news and uh, news with whatever specific reasons there might be news like uh, ezb uh, interest rate decisions or fed interest rates decisions or every second friday non-farmers payroll or oh, so news you know exactly before that the news will happen but there are other news which really come all of a sudden uh, sometimes really bad news like uh, terror attacks or something like that or and um, since a couple of months we have a new source of um, news um, since uh, the time we have a new u.s president uh, you know that this uh, president uh, mr trump from time to time twitters and uh, you have um, there's a strong relationship with um, trump twittering and big candles within our charts so that is something new um, since a couple of months now but uh, uh, that is one additional source for news so news not always but in uh, quite frequently create power candles 
But the good thing about power candles is that the big market participants, so the real big money, and I'm now not talking about uh, our trades uh, as uh, being private traders, uh, maybe trading 0.01 lot, maybe trading 0.1 lot, maybe even trading one lot or even 10 lots. That's still nothing. So I'm now talking about the real big money. Um, when you have to place orders with thousands of lots, those big money, big market participants, they reveal their real interests about prices on the forex market or on other markets. So you will see, along with power candles, normally the volume goes up. And uh, since those big players, they have to maneuver really big amounts of money, uh, they cannot do everything within a few milliseconds. That's not possible. You cannot place an order of 10,000 lots and uh, that would really ruin the price. So you have to do it stepwise. But now the market is already in to one direction. So you have a follow-up actions of those big market participants, participants as well. And that is a little bit of the story behind the power candles and why they work. So in principle, we are talking about exactly this one here. So here's an example. Here is one that's uh, H1 data from um, um, Euro, US dollar. It's already a long time ago. If I see the price, it's 1.35. So that chart is not that fresh. But anyhow, it's just for illustration purpose. Um, and um, you see here a big candle. And the question behind is simply, is there a typical behavior in time and price after the occurrence of a power candle? So you see, I have drawn two lines here, uh, two red lines. And the question is, is that maybe something quite typically? Um, and overall, you see that the price goes into the direction of the power candle. So is that something we can use for trading? And the answer is simply yes. But what we need is we need something like a minimum size for such a candle. So what is a power candle? Is it uh, from, from uh, 10 bips or 40 bips or 100 bips or whatever, depending on the time frame, of course, but so we need criteria. So is there a minimum size for such a candle to be labeled being a power candle? And both things, we can answer a little bit already with a simple Excel sheet. And let me show what I have done here. So um, since I don't want to, to bore you a little bit uh, too much here with uh, Excel uh, details, but uh, briefly how that Excel sheet uh, is created. Uh, starting on the left side here, you see just the prices uh, open, high, low, close uh, on an H1 base. So finally, that are about of uh, 70,000 uh, um, rows here. Then I simply calculate uh, the body size here in, in real numbers, so not percentage, um, so um, just the difference between close and open. And then I compare that size, but the absolute value without the sign, with a threshold, a limit, uh, oh, it's uh, now in German here. Schwelle, Schwelle means um, limit or threshold. Um, so in this case, it's 40 bips. Whenever this candle on the left is bigger than 40 bips, then a one would occur here. Uh, let me show you at least one example here. Here we are. So we have an example. That candle is bigger than um, than 40 bips, and then a one pops up here. And what I do then, whenever I have a one, so meaning I have a power candle, I look to the right 
and calculate for the future the movement. Let me highlight what, what's here. So I look to the difference to one candle in the future compared with the close of that power candle. So I know now the movement after one hour. Next to the right, I calculate the movement after two hours, after three hours, and so on and so forth. And I have done the analysis here in that Excel sheet until 24 hours. And now what I have done additionally is I multiply that price difference in the future with the long or short direction. So um, my hypothesis is that the price goes into the direction of my power candle. So if we have a short candle, so going to the minus, then I multiply everything with minus one. So now if I add up summer, summer means sum, I add up all the price movements after three hours, after four hours, after six hours, and so on and so forth, then I can plot that. And that's exactly what you have within the chart. What does it mean? It means the average movement after one hour, two hour, five hours, and so on and so forth. And now it's getting interesting because everything is calculated with the right sign. So short movements to the short side times minus one. Long movement, of course, to the plus side. Uh, no need for any correction. Multiplier. It looks like that the overall price movement goes into the direction of my power candle. And there's another number here, uh, which you might have already realized. How often does that event occur? And in this case, it's three and a half percent. So um, around about every 33rd uh, candle is the power candle. Or in other words, um, since the day has 24 hours, so every second day we have something like at least one power candle. So it's not set that less often, but at least sometimes it occurs. Let me let me show you um, what happens if I make that threshold much shorter. So let's go down to 10 bips, 10 bips only. And of course, um, the number of power candles um, is extreme now. And uh, we have um, every third candle is following that. But we don't get that typical behavior. So, but on the other hand, if you go, for example, to 60 bips, doing a little bit um, higher candles, uh, higher candle sizes, then we once again get the typical picture. How to interpret that picture? It means starting from the close price of the power candle itself, the price goes up, then for the first seven hours, then it comes back a little bit, but not even to the close, and I emphasize the close of the power candle, not the open, and then for the next uh, 10 hours, it goes up um, extremely um, steep. So what we have here is the statistical proof that the hypothesis, whenever a power candle occurs, the price goes into the direction of that candle for the next couple of hours. That's now being proved. And that's good because now we have that probability advantage, that edge we can use for our trading activities. And just to illustrate that, that this is quite typical, um, in this graph I have summarized the, the, the average price movements um, for power candles of 20 bips, 40 bips, 60 bips, 80 bips, and 100 bips. So you see that in the region between 40 and 80 bips, it looks quite well that we have 
that probability advantage. And that is already enough in order to have successful trades. But the most important thing is you can do the same analysis for other underlyings and you will find, of course, different number of thresholds. But the overall behavior is quite similar. And going here for H1 candles, uh, the main reason is to have really good statistics. You might imagine that if I do the same on D1 base and looking back for the last 10 years, for example, then it's only 2,500 candles at all. Now 1% is 25. So if I would have the same percentage, like here, 1% of all my candles would... Uh, um, exceeds the threshold, then it's only 25 candles. So that statistic is not that good. But for H1, I have already lots of data, 80,000 uh, rows here, and therefore I can really argue that this is now statistically proved. Knowing that, we can already derive some first rules and um, what we know. So we know now that there is a probability advantage after a power candle, in the sense that whenever a power candle occurs, so exceeding a certain threshold, then the price follows the direction of that candle. So you can think of uh, a big train start, uh, has started uh, into one direction, um, due to a news event, due to whatever, and now the train goes on into that direction, not easily being stopped. So it follows the direction of the power candle. If there's a bull candle, big bull candle, price goes additionally upwards. If we have a big short candle, price goes additionally downwards. Of course, you can think about variants of that trading approach. For example, you might uh, look for small corrections before entering a trade. So the analysis uh, within that Excel sheet was done in a way, hey, every, the trade would have been opened exactly uh, at the close of that candle or maybe the open of the next candle, which will be close uh, to the, uh, the close of the previous candle. But anyhow, what you can think is, hey, why not waiting a little bit that there's a correction after the candle first and then opening the trade. So a little bit more like my picture, this one-time statistic picture illustrates. So first of all, the price went down a little bit down and then going upwards once again. So that might be one possible improvement. Um, and there's another reason why I mentioned that. Uh, you will not be always in front of your screen um, when a power candle occurs. You may come back later, two hours later, and still seeing that candle, but the game is by far not over. There might be still a good chance for you opening a trade. Another idea to improve that concept is not sinking in, in BIPs, in absolute numbers, like I have done within that Excel sheet. A lot of you might remember the um, financial crisis 2008 up to maybe 2010 or 11, um, especially when everything was really... Um, extremely nervous. You might remember that we have had huge candles in a row. So what does it mean? So in talking about a fixed definition like 40 bips might not be adequate. It might be better to use a comparison, for example, to the overall ATR, to the overall volatility of the market. Just use an ATR indicator to measure the overall volatility of the market. And if 
that is already extremely high, then the power candle must be even higher or bigger. Um, so think more in terms of a multiple of an ATR as a threshold to label a candle, a power candle or not. So that variant, by the way, will be the one we have within that uh, indicator for MT4. So it's a good idea to, to use the overall volatility as a measure for the candle size and not the candle size itself because then we don't have any link to specific timings like high volatility markets, low volatility markets, medium volatility markets and so on. So that might be an additional improvement here as well. As promised, I want to show you one uh, possibility to really trade that uh, power candles um, via a small tool. And that uh, indicator is coded by Peter Müller, a colleague of mine. Uh, he's living in Austria and he's really doing a great job uh, coding all that stuff and even coding expert advisors, for example. And you will see, and um, first go through the list here, but I will do it in practice as well, uh, that that indicator has um, a few settings, um, just a color, okay, uh, but it has an ATR period. So exactly what I mentioned, uh, use an ATR value <clears throat> uh, in order to really measure the size in a right way of a candle. And still you can um, switch between candle body as I mentioned during my talk, or you can um, additionally have a look to the overall high-low differences as well. And the indicator is, uh, what, what does the indicator? Finally, it highlights uh, all um, power candles fulfilling those kind of criteria. But let's go in practice because uh, then everything is uh, much easier to explain. So let's open uh, a chart, um, a fresh chart here. Uh, let me fill more or less nearly this complete uh, screen here with uh, that chart. So that's now um, Euro, US dollar, and now I'm on H1 base. Um, and you think here, hey, what is a power candle? Uh, is there a, um, a specific one, yes or no? And now let's do what I sometimes call quick and dirty statistics, like looking to this candle here, uh, now circulating around with my cursor. That would be a short candle within the next couple of um, hours. Overall, price went further down. Or at the beginning of the chart, having a big candle here, yes, for the next couple of candles, um, price went up. So hypothesis confirmed uh, by statistics of two. No, uh, that's just a joke. Uh, so that's not how we have done it, how we have derived uh, that setup. You have seen um, the Excel sheet, Excel sheet with 70,000 uh, candles in order to prove or not prove uh, that hypothesis. But anyhow, we can now do the next step and we can use uh, that indicator and that indicator is here, uh, JFT Giant Candles. And I simply throw that indicator here on my chart. And now I have the choice with a couple of values. So I need an ATR a period. And originally that is uh, has been done for um, D1 data. For H1 uh, data, I would increase that number. Minimum would be uh, 24 reason. Uh, at least I want to have always a full day in the history of um, the ATR so that we have not just the night period which is normally a low volatility phase. Then we would have more or less always at the beginning of the market uh, power candles so that would be not a good story. So minimum would be here would be 24 in order to have always a complete day being the history for that ATR. But 
maybe not uh, one day, maybe two days, so 48. Then we have that multiplier being the threshold to label a candle, a power candle. And finally, we can distinguish uh, between body or um, the overall um, high-low difference. I personally go always for the body uh, because I don't want to label big uh, dojis being a power candle. So that's all. And now we have a picture here. And uh, we can, what you see here, okay, the kaya, I should maybe change the colors so that you can see it a little bit better, but uh, you will see at the beginning here of the chart, there's one candle exceeding the ATR uh, threshold uh, and um, the multiplier of three is already incorporated here. So we have one candle exceeding and now back to the hypothesis. After such a power candle, the market should go on into the direction of the power candle. Okay, proof once again, statistic one. Um, that is not a real statistics, as you know, but at least for this power candle, it has worked fantastically. Um, we can think about other candles. You see already here, uh, very good within that uh, second chart window, uh, always the size of the body of uh, the, the right candle compared to the overall ATR value. And you see, yeah, of course, there's a, a difference if I maybe go down the road with an ATR to 24. Uh, still, I would not touch any of those uh, power candles. But for example, let me reduce the multiplier to 2.5. Uh, oh, still not in the range. Okay, I go directly here to two, uh, then there will be additional candles being highlighted uh, as being a power candle as well. And you see if, um, it doesn't work that bad. So this candle, once again, confirmation of the hypothesis. Next candle, confirmation. This candle, no, no confirmation, exactly the opposite. So that candle, is now labeled being a power candle, but price does uh, the, diff uh, the exact um, differencing. And now back here, yes, confirmed, slightly confirmed, but only more or less a flat movement. And then next confirmation here. And for those two, I cannot foresee the uh, real future. You see, that is short term statistics just looking back to a few candles but of course um, the excel sheet for example was done for uh, 10 years uh, history so a much longer history but the good thing of the indicator it helps you uh, to identify those candles you can play around with the thresholds the atr values and of course what you can even do is you can you might change time frame for example to m5 but make sure that you change uh, the atr period here as well um, and uh, honestly uh, i still would go for an a TR period, uh, which would still represent more or less a day, uh, which would mean 288 uh, candles of period, uh, simply because I don't want to follow with the ATR um, the intraday volatility movements, which are always there. Um, and then you are always behind the market. So that's the problem with that. Uh, if you don't have a complete day within the ATR period, then you are always lagging um, to the ATR uh, behavior. And therefore, I would go at least for, for higher periods here. Anyhow, that's how to work with that. Um, so you have uh, simply put that indicator here. Um, into your file uh, folder uh, MQL4 indicators. So exactly here 
you have to place that indicator you can have via email from from my end uh, that is a folder uh, you have to copy that uh, indicator and then you can apply that simply by um, drag and drop to the chart and you have highlighted um, directly the power candles within the chart good let's go back to the slides but um, as you might um, imagine we come now already to the end so what we have learned today lessons learned power candles power candles are the black swans of trading and that's not a marketing gag or something just to name it that way uh, everything is meant real meant serious and we can prove it via statistics just looking back in this case for 10 years history uh, of price data and we can confirm a lot two things the one i have not done today but i will do within the next webinars uh, next month um, that we have a deviation from randomness because those kind of candles occur too often compared to complete random behavior of the markets and whenever you have that deviation from randomness it's a trader the traders chance and what we found out here is that there's a preferred direction after the occurrence of a power candle and the preferred directions of the future price movement is into the direction of the power candle so if you have a big bull candle price goes up upwards again and if you have a big uh, beer candle then the price goes down what you have seen here as well is that um, uh, thanks to peter Mulner, we have a very nice indicator uh, you might uh, have interest in that indicator as well and i can send it around so that indicator helps us to identify power candles looking to the real body size of a candle and comparing that size with an ATR, which I think personally is the best way to deal with uh, power candles. So um, it's a useful tool and it's a useful overall strategy to look for those black swans uh, within trading. So you know my, my email address um, and you can get in touch with me to get that indicator or if you want to have additional slides here, Excel sheets, or if you simply have a question to the webinar or even other questions all around trading. Um, it's always for me a pleasure to have you here within that webinar series. Thanks to JFD who makes that uh, webinars possible for all of us. And... Um, now i wish you all a very good evening have a nice time see you again very soon and watch out even for the webinars of my colleagues very interesting topics you find there as well see you again hopefully bye bye